O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. For his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Let us pray. I will praise the Lord at all times. His praises will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You are a good God. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We come this morning to let you know that you are welcome in this service. Be with our pastor as he proclaim your word. We love you, Lord. We have come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Continue to lead us and guide us in the way you would have us to go. This is our prayer. In the name above every name, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Lord Jesus, we bow before you in humility and ask you to examine our hearts today. Show us anything that is not pleasing to you. Reveal any secret pride, any unconfessed sin, any rebellion or unforgiveness that may be hindering our relationship with you. We know that we are your beloved children, having received you into our hearts and lives and having accepted your death as penalty for our sinfulness. This price you paid covered us for all time, and our desire is to live for you. So as we take the bread representing your life that was broken for us, we remember and celebrate your faithfulness to us and to all who will receive you. I can't begin to fathom the agonizing suffering of your crucifixion. Yet you took the pain for us. You died 
for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your extravagant love and unmerited favor. Thank you for your death gave us life, abundant life now and eternal life forever. As you instructed your disciples, we too receive this bread today in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, family and friends. Thank you for worshiping with us on this great Communion Sunday. So glad we've learned how to depend on Jesus. Please call, send cards, and check on our sick and, and shut-in members. They appreciate your kindness. Circle leaders, we thank you for your labor of love. I'm giving a special blessed shout out to Deacon Christopher Baysmore also. I received numerous calls from some sick and shut-in members on how his prayers, laughter, and encouraging words touched their hearts. So Deacon Baysmore, I'm giving you your roses while you are above ground. Even in this pandemic, you rock. God bless you. And we say thanks to each one of you for adhering to your financial obligations. You are blessed. Happy birthday to all persons celebrating birthdays during this hot and glorious month of August. Enjoy yourselves. You deserve happiness. Happy birthday, Sister Helen Pay, Deaconess Sarah Plummer, and Brittany Walker celebrating birthdays on today. This month of August is truly a great month. It has a lot of persons who has been blessed to join the 80 years old and the 80 plus birthday club. And we also have the 90 years and 90 years plus birthday club. So we're giving a special birthday greeting to our queens and our kings. Happy 80th and 80 plus birthday to Anita Bratcher Butler, Sarah Plummer, Annie Hawthorne, Zellen Wilson, Samuel Malone, June Cunningham, Jean White, Ruby Brantley, Mary Williams, Shirley Smith, May Dean Smith Harris, and Gloria Wilson. May God give you sweet peace and a rainbow of love. Now, how about this? Sister Lily Waller celebrated her 98th birthday on Saturday, August the 1st. And Sister Gracie Glenn will celebrate her 95th birthday on Monday, August the 3rd, 2020. God only promised us three scores and ten, which equals 70 years. But these earthly angels have met a milestone of love and strength. So enjoy. Happy birthday to God be the glory. Now let's rejoice on God's Communion Sunday. Feast on the menu, which will read, Bread of Heaven, feed us till we want no more. Now, family, be careful. Love one another. Keep looking up. Go in peace. Stay patient and don't ever give up, as the late Congressman John Lewis informed us. Have a great week. Until we meet again, we do love you.
I want to direct your attention now to the book of Philippians, the first uh, chapter of the book of Corinthian, uh, Philippians, beginning at the 12th verse uh, from the New International Translation. Uh, the scripture reads as follows. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace God and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not necessarily supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. I want to use that scripture and, in fact, the entire uh, chapter as a backdrop for reflecting on something that I believe to be extremely important for our times, and that is encouragement and courage. It's important that we learn to uh, embrace both the power of encouragement and surely have within us the courage to face the challenges of this life. Our nation is going through some exceptional turmoil. The problems that we're going to face, that we are facing now, and that we will face in the future will be overwhelming, and it's going to take men and women who have embraced uh, strength and truth and power that is within them, that they might be able to face the cares, face the, uh, the, the, the challenges and hardships that will certainly be ours in the future. We live even now in the face of struggle and pain. Mortals, mortals raise questions around the notion of hardship and pain. We declare, what, uh, why, why does the struggle come my way? We want to uh, challenge the rationale, the uh, the source of of all sources. Uh, uh, why does this have to come? Up? Why is it that I must experience pain? Uh, others seem to get away with it. Why has this situation come my way? Why must I struggle in uh, this? 
problem in this care, in this difficulty. I don't know about you, but I surely have experienced those times when my spirit has been so low that my will to press on has been challenged. Sometimes you are simply faced with those predicaments that, that, that causes you to raise the question, shall I continue on? Often hardships and cruel obstacles bring about weariness and fatigue that could be fatal to one's progress and one's existence, could be fatal to your moving ahead. In these moments, we need encouragement. In these moments, we need to find a source of courage. Encouragement often comes from observing others demonstrating evidences of victories derived from unforeseen or transcendent power and help. When we see somebody else's blessings, when we see somebody else going through a problem, a care that, uh, that, that seems impossible and yet they manage to get through it, we find some encouragement. In our prayer, we, prayer meeting a few weeks ago, we had a tremendous testimony by a young man whose body was uh, laden with, with weakness. And uh, he had trouble with his movement and, and, and it, and it eventually the body needed to have a lung transplant, but the weakness of his body made the diagnosis by the doctor that the lung transplant was not a good idea. But prayer and faith prevailed and effort was made to strengthen that body. And that body uh, came to the condition where they decided that a lung plant transplant was possible and was done. And oh, what delight, what praise, what, what, what joy that came forth from the young man who was then able to sing his songs using those transplanted lungs that had been given to him. And God blessed him. And then, very recently, uh, this COVID-19 attacked him, attacked his body. And the doctors worked on him and eventually concluded in their thinking that he wasn't going to make it, that they couldn't get him through. The nurses, likewise, had seen patients even not as sick as he was, that didn't come back, did not recover. But God, God and a whole lot of people that was praying on his behalf, a whole lot of faith that was exercised by him, a whole lot of trusting in a God that's able to deliver. And he could give testimony that, that the nurses were amazed, the doctors were 
profoundly impressed by what could take place beyond their scientific knowledge and capability. I don't know about you, but that's an engaging notion. That's encouragement for those of us who are struggling in the face of disease, in the face of anguish. Our text finds the Apostle Paul in prison in chains. And while in prison, he demonstrates great courage and thereby provides encouragement to others. Paul has the desire and zeal to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And because of that proclamation of Jesus Christ, he is in chains. He says, everybody knows that I'm suffering these chains. I'm suffering prison because of my proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was wrapped up in the spirit and identity of Christ in such a way that 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 he was uh, given the passion the joy the commitment to proclaim that gospel he had absolutely joy in in the relationship that he had with Jesus Christ. His life was made complete, and even though he was in prison, he had confidence in the Lord and dared all even the more to claim, proclaim the gospel without fear. Had no fear because of the spirit and the relationship and the joy uh, that he found in Jesus Christ and what he wanted to share with other folks. What he wanted other people to have with Jesus Christ that he proclaimed the gospel. You know, it's a good thing to have something that you are willing to die for. If you don't have something that you are willing to die for, then it's necessary for you to, 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 to have something that will enable you to indeed live. Thanks be to God that we could have demonstrated to us the power of a man who comes to know Jesus the Christ in such a way. For Paul to live is Christ and to die is gain. Living, living, and dying becomes the same thing. Joy, living and dying becomes identical. And so I push myself on. I am able to endure whatever comes down because it's the same thing, whether it is life or death. It is the embodiment of that that enables us to live, enables us to exercise courage. Living in that truth, his enemy found favor in the gospel. 
Living in that truth, Paul was confident and had no fear because he was in the power and presence of God. Seeing this, seeing this in Paul, his co-laborers were encouraged. His co-laborers was inspired by the confidence and courage that Paul faced in the face of opposition. It's encouragement and courage that we are looking for, that we need in this day and age. I know many people that have said that they were all ready to be with the Lord. They wondered why he kept them around. They felt useless and worn out. That truly is a condition that many of us have. And somehow we've got to move past that in order to exercise the power, the grace, and the inspiration and the encouragement that others need. We live in a culture where the majority of people don't understand hardship, don't understand hunger and suffering, and yet they, they, they think they do. They easily feel pressure and become uh, desperate for options and easy solutions. They are looking for peace and hope because of current situations feeling uncomfortable. And many think they're out of control. Nothing that I can do about it. Nothing I can do with it. It's at those times, too, that they begin to search for encouragement, search for a way out. They get become more sensitive to look for what might be coming forth. Their search makes them more observant than when times are easy. You look harder. You look more intensely, intensely when you are in trouble, when you have hardship, when you have some difficulty. They notice people that have courage when facing the same pressure that they are under. They notice them and look for some inspiration and some help. They notice people that offers help and encouragement to others in difficult times. They notice people that find joy in spite of the medical report or the antibiotics don't work or don't seem to work uh, or, or the job cut back or the looming debt that's falling on them. They look with greater intensity for some clarity, something to get them through. It's clear that according to the scriptures, our role as believers does not exempt us from problems of this life. Because we are believers, because we know God does not exempt us from trial, from hurt. We are in the same boat as the people around us. We suffer the same problems. We sense the same losses. We, we fall into the same situations. Problems seems to be ours as well. We are influenced by the downturn in the economy and the exposure 
to pandemic diseases. They are ours as well. We struggle with family problems and family cares that come through broken relationships and come from trial and difficulties of getting along. We suffer from the same bad choices and the accidents that prevail in our world. They come our way. And when we see the faith and courage of others, when we observe other folks, we are empowered with a transforming courage that enables us to experience joy in the middle of life's hardships and pain. When we see the victories of others, when we see how they have overcome, how they have achieved, we become beneficiaries of their faith their commitment, their courage. When we look at the courage born in the young congressman, John Lewis, who faced great odds to do good, we are inspired to greater things. We saw John Lewis, who was willing to give his life for the moral high ground of our nation. Son of a sharecropper. Young, but because he was caught up into destiny, caught up into a Christ that he had come to love, become bold enough to start practicing preaching to chickens, loving God and embracing God in such a way that I must face the opposition of a racist nation that would not allow my people to go to the polls and vote. And he was beaten and bruised and willing to give up his life that his people might have an opportunity to vote. Took the high ground for the nation. Was willing to stay peaceable, nonviolent, but proclaim with dignity, courage, humility that right is right and people need to stand up for that which is right. And righteous. He would declare that if you see something wrong, you ought to speak up, you ought to stand up, you ought to press on. He had courage. Paul was willing to give his life for the proclamation of the gospel. He was willing to surrender to the will of Christ and the love of Christ that he had that he might be able to proclaim that truth. And he recognized his power came from God. And then there is Christ, hallelujah, who was willing to give his life for us, who died so that we might live, who went to way of Calvary that we might live, that suffered, bled, and died on the cross that we might live. What courage that he was willing to face. He said, this is a bitter cup. This is a tough cup. 
Lord, will you take it away? But not my will, your will. I'm willing to do what is obedient, what is right, and what you desire for me to do, O oh God. I'm willing to do it. Christ did it for us. Let us live in Christ that we might live in victory with courage and determination to be obedient to his will. My brothers and sisters, we've got some great odds to stand up against. If you're going through some problems now, they're just testing grounds for what you got to go through and what's coming. If you're going through some hardships right now, hold fast because something worse is coming along our way and we got to have the stuff in us to stand firm, to be not only encouraged, but, but, but to be courageous. We've got to have a relationship with God that empowers us to be correct. The internal stuff, the internal relationship with God so that we can stand firm because the enemy has not stopped his warfare. He's coming at us to destroy us individually, to, to, to destroy our nation, to destroy our people. And we've got to stand firm. Do the right thing. Stand for righteousness and justice. Stand in the face of all of the obstacles with love. Got to have the courage to love. And we've got to have the boldness to trust that righteousness shall roll down like water. We've got to have the faith to know that we will be victorious. We've got to be courageous enough to make sure that we get to the polls and vote. It's going to be rough. It's going to be tough. A lot of stuff going to come, but we've got to go. And the only way that we can do, do that in the face of the dangers and the face of the obstacles, and the only way we're going to stand for righteousness and remain in love with all people and all of God's people, the only way we're going to do that is to have a solid relationship with God himself. We've got to accept what Jesus gave us. For you see, he suffered, bled, and died on Calvary's cross for your sins and my sins. Receive him. Gain the power. Gain the strength. Gain the renewal. Gain the hope that we all have when we trust in what Jesus Christ has done for us. Will you join me now in prayer? God, our Father, we come before you just now to thank you for great men and women of courage that has taught us to love that has taught us that we can trust and believe in you. Oh God, have mercy on us now. Empower us with the strength that we need. Bless those, oh God, who need you since the pain and the hurt in their lives and they need deliverance hear their cry hear their plea and bless them as only you can do for it is in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ that we pray 
our soul says. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to make ready for us to join in around the Lord's table that we might be able to commune together. If you will get those elements and make them ready as we prepare for fellowship and communion with the Master. It was the Thursday before the Friday of the death of our Lord and Master that he instituted this supper. He took bread and broke it and blessed it and likewise he did the cup and said as often as you do this you show forth my death and suffering. We thank God for the privilege that is ours to come one more time gathered together, gathered together because we are in the Spirit all over this community, but we are together because we are in the Spirit of Christ. We thank God for Him allowing us to gather even in this way to break bread. And as we come, let us remember Jesus. Let us remember His concern for the poor, the needy, the lost. Let's remember Jesus, remember his teachings, how he said, love one another, but not just one another. He said, love your enemy, love those who despitefully use you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. He said, rejoice because you hang out with a great crowd for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Let's remember Jesus. You think life has dealt you an unfair blow? Trouble seems to be on every hand. Your tears are your meat day and night. Remember Jesus, how they put him on an old rugged cross, how they nail nails in his hands and put a crown of thorn, uh, thorns on his head. Blood come dripping down. Somebody said, Jesus, why don't you come down and save yourself and us too? But Jesus looked down through the corridors of time, saw your need and my need, your sin and my sin, and he stayed there, shed his blood for the remission of our sin. We can't bless as did Jesus, but he said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst. Let us talk to the Lord. God, we ask now your blessings upon each one of these, your servants, that's under the sound of my voice. We pray, O oh God, that you would move in them and around them and bless them as we come before you, seeking to draw real close to you. Bless these elements that as we partake of them, we would take on your likeness. We would receive your blessed presence and power in our lives. Fortify us, O oh God, that we be, may be in the likeness of you. In the name of him who gives us hope eternal, we pray. Amen. Amen. We invite you to take the bread, which represents the body of Christ. Let us remember Jesus as we commune 
together. Amen. And let us take the cup which represents the shed blood shed for the remission of sin. Let us commit ourselves to the will and the way of Jesus Christ unto God. Let us commune together. Amen. And they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. We have not that mount to go, but let us go down from here with the knowledge that our victory is indeed already sealed. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you and grant unto you his peace. Amen. 